até a cruz. Well, good morning. It is good to see you all here and those who are joining us online as well. We have a very busy morning, which is good and also a little bit like, are we going to get through this? And I think we will. So we're just going to go one thing after the other, and it's going to, it's, it's a lot of, um, a lot of things happening tonight, today, but it's all, all really good. Uh, starting with the new uh, member reception, the which will happen this morning at 8.30 and then at 11 a.m. as well. And we are going to rejoice with those new members who come forward as they have um, uh, been led to us by uh, the Holy Spirit. So we rejoice that God continues to provide a community for each and every one of us. And as you came in, you might have seen a few tables out there with a few items. So that's still uh, for a, a second chance um, auction uh, that will happen between services. So you don't need to worry about um, getting out before anything <laughs> has ended. Uh, so we'll have it between services. You can put down your name and your phone number. And if you want to come in uh, uh, back again and see what's what's happening there you you are more than welcome to that between the services and then we will give you a call when uh, the um, auction has been closed and then we see who uh, who won the or who outbid everyone and get the item you bid for uh, adult education is happening also in between services today so we have uh, we're wrapping up the lord's supper uh, and of course as i've said before it's uh, it's a big theme that we uh, are not able to cover in four weeks, but we tried our best to uh, look at the, the biggest issues, the biggest things that the Lord's Supper is about, and then uh, we can, of course, go back and study it over and over again. So that's our last, this is our last Sunday for, for this adult education, but in the summer, starting on June, let me see, June 15th, we are going to meet once a month between June and September for also um, conversation about different topics. Uh, so you can find this in, the, in your insert for, um, for these, um, these studies. Uh, grad graduate Recognition Sunday is going to happen on June 4th. So if you have any names of anybody who is graduating, please contact the office or one of us and uh, we can let you know what, it, the, what information we need uh, from you so that we can lift up those who are finishing um, some uh, work uh, for school. And we will have a congregational meeting on June 11th, so just keep that in your mind as well. And uh, let's see. We will also, there is an announcement also 
that with Nancy, our pianist, our accompanist, um, it will her last Sunday will be on June 11th. So we will be having a, that a celebration for her as well and thanking her uh, during uh, a busy Sunday as well. So we will have one, one Sunday, one um, service that Sunday, and we will have, um, um, what, is, what else is happening on? Confirmation Sunday. Confirmation Sunday. So Confirmation Sunday, uh, Goodbye Sunday. So many, many things happening. Uh, so we give thanks to God for all of his blessings and how he guides us now and he continues to guide us into the future. So with that promise from God to us, who is faithful always, let us begin uh, our service. And please stand as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. Let us sing. Let us confess our sin to God, who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast mercy. Gracious and merciful Father, you have brought us out of the darkness of our sins into the light of Jesus' light and salvation in his resurrection. Yet we are still captive by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from the evil one, and free us from the captivity of sin. Renew us by your grace, and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. In the mercy of Almighty God, our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ puts to flight all evil in its deeds. Blots out our sin and reconciles us to the Father, bringing us peace and humbling earthly pride. Jesus Christ freed you from your sins by his death and by his resurrection. Therefore, by the authority of Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another.
In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our Father, the world deceives us with empty promises to glorify ourselves as if Christ is absent from our lives. Give us faith to trust that true to his promise. He is with us and for us until the end of time, that even when we cannot perceive him with our senses, he is pouring himself out in word and sacrament, continuing to make us one with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. First reading is from Acts 1. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? 
He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing upward towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why, are you, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fury ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Be I'd like to invite our, the children that are with us to come forward for our children's sermon. Right, Milo, you're going to get so much out of this, Milo. <laughs> Start the habits young, right? Got the bow tie on, he's got to learn. Well, I have a question for you. What is your favorite color? Blue? Purple? Teal? Milo, what's your favorite color? Today, let's see, maybe maroon? Okay. How about, um, do you have a favorite season? Whose favorite season? What's your favorite season? Um, my favorite season is winter. Winter? Summer. Summer. Oh, you agree on that one. How about you, Milo? Maybe summer? Okay. We don't know yet. Which one's your favorite? Let's see. Um, since you all live in Washington, I'm going to assume your favorite sports team is the Seahawks. Right? Because you can't live here or not. You agree? You don't agree? <gasps> you don't agree? The Mariners? Oh, you're, you're more of a, a baseball fan than football? Okay, that's, that's allowed here in this state. I like the Mariners. You like the Mariners, too? How about the Kraken? I mean, they did pretty well this year. 
It's been, they've been pretty good? Okay. Yeah. How about, um, let's see. Do you like eggs, pancakes, or cereal for breakfast? Cereal? Cereal? Okay. Cereal and pancakes? Okay. So we have some agreement, but not on everything, right? Is your favorite subject in school, do you like reading or math better? Math. math and reading. I hear all these different answers. You know, these things are maybe small things, right? Like your favorite color, your favorite season, your favorite subject at school, your favorite sports teams. But did you know that we sometimes fight about those things? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you all never fight over what's for breakfast or maybe what color you have to paint your room or maybe if you get a new bread spread. You never fight about those things at all. We got, we got a color change here discussing, <laughs> wanting to be discussed, Kim. <laughs> so my point is, is today on our screen it says that we, they may be one as we are one. A lot of times we want to be the same at church. We want to be here at church and we want the person next to us to have the same even opinions as we have or the same values down to the little last value of, of what we have. Like, do you open Christmas presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? I mean, these are big, huge things that can actually impact marriages, right? But the thing is, we don't agree on those things, and you, we probably never will. And while we will work at, on some things and we have problems to resolve them, our job as a church is actually not to make us all think and act the same way. Even though sometimes we mess up and we think that that's actually the most important part. If that's not the most important part, Guess how we are actually one? I'm going to actually give you the answer, okay? Because it's something that we, it's so out, something so different than the rest of the world talks about that we need to be reminded a lot. We are all one in the need for God's forgiveness. We are all one in the fact that we have all sinned. We've all fought. We've all been angry. We've all been mean. We've all not been kind sometimes. We all disagree. And sometimes that disagreement makes us divide each other up and be angry at each other, where what God does in Christ is he brings us together and says, you've all fallen short. You've all messed up. You all can't do this on your own. And so then God makes us one by saying, and I forgive you all, because you are mine. And I want you to have that forgiveness now and forever. So it's okay if you have different, fa different colors you like, different sports teams you like, even if you have different opinions on really important things, we can all still be church together because what brings us to be at church together is the center of who we are, and that's Jesus Christ. Not any opinion, not any decision we make other than the fact that God loves us and forgives us forever. Okay? Let us pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing us together from all over the place, not just here at Creator, but the churches that are gathering around the world. We're so different in so many ways, and we don't always agree, but we give thanks that you bring us together and you give us your grace, forgiving us and bringing us to unity in you. We give thanks and we praise you this morning in Jesus' name, and amen. You may return to your seats. And with the congregation, please rise. The Holy Gospel from St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to wh all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you 
the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you, glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me to, from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and that they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What a perfect text for New Member Sunday. So New Members, this is part that we didn't include in your class, but you'll hear today right before you come up and you're received as members. We must agree on everything from now on. Okay? That's what you're signing. Actually, we don't even have to make you sign, so I can't even hold you to that. We must be of one mind, of all will in all things. That would make us run for the hills if I hadn't got given that children's sermon, right? Because we have a hard time agreeing on everything, anything. My last congregation, the, the, the carpet was so old and so bad that it was bubbling up in the middle. And it was this ugly mauve color. And then whenever we had a funeral and we brought in the casket, we would trip over the carpet because that had bubbled up in so many places. But do you think we could agree on what color to replace that carpet that was an actual hazard to us all? No. And so what they made me do is in secret decide the color and tell nobody that I was the decision maker. Because I was afraid for the rest of my call, people would be like, oh, the pastor picked the color. It matched beautifully the stained glass windows. It was wonderful. Nobody tripped from then on. But we struggled in making that choice together. Even here during our gala, which the youth and our adult volunteers did a wonderful job, we had this little moment of, of strife. Do we put the red chairs or the blue chairs around the tables? Leah championed this for us, and we allowed the kids to kind of make a decision, in kind of, and then we put the red seats around so they'd be more comfortable. Things are hard to agree on as a church, much less to be united in those more decisive matters. Often we think that our job as a church is to make unity, to share with us in the mission of the church of God, as if unity of the world is the mission of the church. We act as if it's our job to create this in our church, in our world, as if Jesus left a task for us when he ascended to the Father, which actually we commemorated that on Thursday. As if Christ couldn't get all of his work done and he left us some leftover tasks, or he wanted to make sure we wouldn't get bored while we waited for him to return, we twist the mission of the church into something that we must achieve, something that's missing. And we also place it in the wrong place. So often when we go to churches, churches are in, at times full of hypocrites. Right now we are, in fact. You are all hypocrites in some way. I know you don't like being called that, but it's true. We say one thing and we do the other all the time. We want a place that church is void of conflict, as if the kingdom of heaven descends and the choir of angels sing and we all are in unity in all things. And we want to expand that unity beyond our walls. These are good things, but it's not the main thing. 
And usually when we look for that unity, what we're actually focusing it on is some kind of legalism, some kind of law that you agree with me and you would vote the same way and you would think the way, same way as me. And usually when we focus on those things, we're not actually united, are we? People have just learned to stop talking and share their opinion if they disagree with the unity of one particular place. It's not free, it's rather, it's conformity. And so the, the reality of healthiness in the midst of conflict and hypocr hypocrisy and also sameness is a tension we are always going to be in. What is healthy and what is actually important? And what are the things that we're just never going to agree on? We have this desire, innate de desire, to seek unity. And yet we're afraid of it at the same time. Because we don't want to lose ourselves or our identity. And being united, we want to be united, but we don't want to change ourselves. So this is true for churches. This is also true for nations. We are so polarized as our own country. And we can't figure out how to bring ourselves together. A candidate comes forward saying, I will unite us, and what usually happens? We become more divided. And marriages are not exempt from this either. Our Pastor Rossi and I just had our third 17th anniversary yesterday. We had to get married four times to make sure that we are truly united. And you know what? After 17 years, we're united in the commitment to each other, but we do not agree on a lot of things. We, over those years, there's the, not just the color of the house and the towels, but important things that we wrestle with. And that line from Corinthians th chapter 13, that we must endure all things, is so true in the unity, the true unity of a marriage. In our lesson from 1 Peter, we get a little bit more of a, a view of how important and how devastating it can also be to not have that unity. You see, 1 Peter was written to the community facing suffering, not persecution, not starvation, not poverty, but something perhaps more relatable to all of you. The Gentile converts to Christianity whose families and friends were not supportive of their change. They were not excited of their new faith were the, the recipients of this letter from 1 Peter. They were around the table with family and friends, and their family and friends weren't agreeing with the fact that they were now Christians, and they felt betrayed by their own family members. This letter from 1 Peter shows us that even relatively minor suffering and strife can actually be a real threat to our faith. And the challenge is, can you imagine sitting across from your mom or your brother, or your dad, or a dear friend who doesn't support your church, your faith, that doesn't want you to be here on every Sunday, that thinks it comes with a whole agenda of other things, which many churches actually do. And so it creates strife and conflict in those, those important relationships for you. It shakes you. It confuses you. It's so much easier when you're surrounded by people who support and nurture your faith. And they see it as a real blessing. Being surrounded by people you love and who are trying to undermine your faith or, your, or shake you in different ways is that genuine threat slowly eroding. So how do we make the distinction between those legalistic fights that we have that are also something we need to learn how to do and fighting for the sake of the gospel, being united there? Because here's the truth. You can't stop or fix or avoid the darkness in the world. And you are in the line of fire all the time, sometimes by strangers, sometimes by family members. So we shouldn't be surprised that this is something that not only First Peter, but also Jesus takes up. But you are not, however, abandoned in the midst of the dinner table or in the supermarket or even here at church to fend to your, by, for yourself. God has given you this community of faith, not united in all things, but united in the center of who we are in Christ Jesus and our need to be sustained by God's word. 
and you more than anything are in the grip of Christ, who cared for you so dearly that in the night before his death, he prayed to his Father so that you would be protected and you would be held close all the days of your life. Because there is something, or better said, someone, whose name was given to you, to use and to live by, to hold on to and be held on to in the waters of your baptism. And that is the word that the, the son was given to the father. His first act of public ministry was his baptism, where the heavens opened and God said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And what Jesus did with those words is he turned around and he gave it to you so that you would have those same words to hold on to and to be held by. Because we will not be united in our politics or in our opinions, in our color choices, in our music choices, whether it's a hymn or a song here at church. There is so much we won't agree on, so much that we will struggle with. But you have all been called new members today and those who have been here for, since the beginning, those who have not yet been called by the Holy Spirit here. And you have not been called so that you as a square peg can be slammed into a round peg hole. That is not what we're about to do here. You have been called to be made one in your need for God's grace. So as your pastor, one of your pastors, I can promise one thing. We will not agree on all things. From our color choices to our favorite songs or hymns or even who we'll vote for. It doesn't matter to me. And it might matter to you, but if you put that as what matters to you, whether you stay here at Creator or not, you're going to be disappointed at some point. Because at some point we're just going to disagree on something. So that is not our center at, with your pastors or with your fellow Christians. And I truly believe that we do, as a society, need to learn how to disagree on these matters and learn over and over what unity means. It doesn't mean conformity to worldly matters, just as our mission is not uh, to mass-produce cre Creator's vision of what truth and justice and is, as if we are the only ones who know God's kingdom. We will continually hear at Creator talk about communication tools and boundaries and roles and responsibilities, and we will try to understand our limits. And we will be reminded again and again of our need for one particular word. And that word is Jesus gives us in John chapter 17. As his hour has come to glorify the Father, to be used fully, Jesus was being used at this final hour not just to heal or to feed or to calm storms, but to give the one thing that only he can give, eternal life. To know God, the only true God, who has been there since before the world, before the law, is to know God's mercy. For there is one gospel, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, through which, through whom, we are one holy Catholic, which means, ab which means universal, apostolic church. We have been looking for unity. Our world needs it and yearns for it so badly. But we look for it in all the wrong places. It's not something we can achieve. And it's not the work that Jesus left for us to do because his earth visa expired. Jesus gave us unity. Unity in our need to be named as sinners, which actually unites us. It levels us out, naming the darkness and despair of our world that we each face every day that ebbs and flows relentlessly. And also that roaring lion, which is the devil, who has been defeated by Christ, but still enjoys roaring and rattling our peace. Jesus didn't give you work to do to produce unity. He named you and me and the world united in sin, but didn't leave us there. Because then he gave us a new unity in him and his mercy, uniting us in this promise. I give you today, once again, by Christ's authority, I forgive you all your sins. It's as simple as that. We will disagree. And we will work and we will listen and we will learn. That is important.
but not as important as our unity, that we have been gathered by the Holy Spirit to be told that once again, my grace, my forgiveness, is the one thing that you need and only Christ can give you. Once again, you are forgiven in Christ's name. Amen. We receive our new members. Good morning. These persons and families now become part of Creator's community of faith. With us, they too seek to serve God and neighbor. Please come forward uh, to the altar rail as your names are called. Kim and Sharon Lateral. Muriel Hale. Charlotte Cunningham. Mark and Susan Bartlett, Bray, uh, Bray, I'm sorry, Gina Lovell, LaDonna Griffin, John Norrell, Dakota Norrell, Haley Norrell, Sarah, Dennis, Danny, Autumn Knight, Roger Offner, and Doris Mayhew, and Troy Peters. Well, we want to welcome you as we rejoice together uh, that God has brought us together here in this community of faith. And we now treasure the, gift that, the gifts that you all bring to this community, but we also rejoice that you are receiving the greatest gift of all, which you might think joining Creator is a pretty good gift, right? <laughs> but the great gift of Christ for you that we continue to uh, proclaim here Sunday in and Sunday out whenever we meet. This is the call that God has given us. So we rejoice in God's gift for each and every one of us. It doesn't need to be that you are new or that we have been here since the beginning, but this gift comes every single time. So as pastor of Creator, uh, on, on behalf of Christ and of this community of faith, your brothers and sisters in Christ, I receive you and also ask you the, the following questions. Do you intend to live out the promises God made to you in your baptism to live among God's people, to regularly hear God's word and share Christ's supper here, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through your words and actions, 
to serve all people without partiality following the ministry of Jesus Christ and to strive for justice and peace on all the earth. If so, please respond, I do, and I ask God to help, guide, and sustain me. I do, and I ask God to help, guide, and sustain me. Let us pray. Dear and Heavenly Father, uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for these new brothers and sisters in Christ that you have led into this building to be able to uh, be together, to uh, hear your word, and to help one another. We ask you that you continue to bind us in love and to one another in care and in service. We ask you that you strengthen us for service and witness of your forgiveness. Support and guide us in all our days. And we ask you that you bring us at last to that great day when all your children will be in you, be in you in one forever. Amen. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. The love of Christ Jesus be in you. The joy of God's love fill you. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Well you will receive a uh, Thank you. Maybe go back. Please join with me as we share together in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please rise. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for giving us your Son to come all the way to us, bringing us his life and salvation. We ask that you continue to make your presence known to us in your word, forgiving our sin, making us anew, and giving us the faith to trust that you are with us and for us always. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, you created and hold the world in your hand by your power. We ask that you continue to bless our nation and all the peoples of the world. Where war and violence threaten, bring peace and justice. Where oppression reigns, bring liberty. Watch over those who defend us, especially the men and women of our armed forces and those who protect and serve within our communities. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, you have saved us by your grace through the faith of your Son. We pray for the people who are in our hearts and in our minds. We pray for the sick, the distressed, those whose hearts are heavy, those whose lives are burdened, those who mourn, and all who are in any need. We ask that you bring them healing according to your will, 
strength and mercy according to their needs, and the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we join together to share our offering. Please rise and let us pray. Merciful God, maker of all things, through your goodness and mercy, you have blessed us with every gift. As you continue to give us the first fruits of the resurrection through your Son, continue to pour out on us your every blessing daily. And in this way, use us to help our neighbors 
in their every need, from food and clothing to word and sacrament, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the Passover Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death and resurrection destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archang archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Now hear Christ's word for you, that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as I invite the communion service to come forward. We are uh, communing at the altar rail, and as you come forward, you will see uh, grape juice, the clear um, liquid, and also wine. And if you need gluten-free bread, please let us know, and uh, we will have that ready for you. This is Christ's body and blood for you, for the forgiveness of your sin.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please stand as we pray. Gracious Lord, you gave your Son to reconcile us with you and with one another. In his death and resurrection, you unite us with him in new life. Give us the confidence that in his body and in his blood, you continually forgive our sins and make us your own. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now receive God's blessings as you go on your way. The Lord goes before you, the Lord goes behind you, the Lord goes beside you, the Lord goes always with you. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Let the oxen.